Hello everyone, we are the group 3 and today we're going to tackle about the sewing equipments and sewing machine parts. But before the discussion, let me tell you the objectives of the lesson which is to identify the essential sewing equipments as well as its uses and determine the different parts of the sewing machine and its function. So for now, let us proceed with the discussion of sewing equipments. First is sewing tape measures. It is a tape measure in a must hair tool for sewing. You might even want more than one, including a small stretchable measuring tape to carry with you. Sewing tape measure measure are usually marked with inches on one side and centimeter millimeter on the other side. The most common use of a tape measure is to have body measurements, but you can use it for any measuring task because it is flexible but firm. It can stand on its edge and measure the distance around an item such as circle. Usually, tape measure used for measuring your body, body length, among waist, among hips, legs, and usually, you can pass it to the nimo. Second is sewing gauges. It is a hand tool for measuring small areas as you saw. Sew. So, gauges come in a variety of forms. The most common to have is a 6 inch aluminum ruler with a slider. Small all these share gauges have markings for the most common sewing measurements for checking, seam, allowances, hems, or adels, other small measurements. Gudges come in a variety of forms. Although gudges are not necessary tool, they are ex in inexpensive and handy for all hand sewing. Markings, alternation, allowances, and more. Good pin cushions are typically filled with a sod, sodak and wool roving. The wool roving contains lanolin and prevents the pins from rusting. If you make your own crushed walnut shells, make a good substitute for sawdust. The strawberry that is attached to most pin cushions, but also available separately, is filled with fine or emery. The abrasive actions of these fillers removes dirt and rust, keeping the pins sharp and smooth. Usually, sa tuwak, sa garan-garan, pin cushions, ginahin mo siya kay strawberry ang design kay para it is it is able and it is easy to do and sometimes it is kinasagula na siya dust, sand, or sand eh, para ang mga rust or mga taya kay dali ra matanggal sa pin and it come out new. Hand sewing. Hand sewing needles come in varying size with different types of points. The most commonly used hand sewing needles are called sharps. Sharps are having a medium length in comparison with all available needles, have a rounded eye for the thread, and are suitable for almost any fabric. Moreover, when using a needle, use what's best for the projects to save yourself some frustration. Use sewing needles on thick or difficult to sew fibers. Use finer needles on fine or delicate fabrics. Sewing Needle Treader Falling eyesight or just being tired can make treating a sewing needle difficult. It doesn't have to be. Use a needle treader to solve the problem. The wire of a needle treader easily passes through the eye of a needle, then opens and creates a large opening for the thread. Then you can pull the wire and thread back through the eye of the needle. Furthermore, use your needle treader with a needle that has a large enough eye for the thread you are using, so you are not forcing the thread and needle treader through the eye of the needle. Forcing the wire can cause it to break. Seam Reaper Mistakes happen and seam reapers remove unwanted stitches. The fine tip of a seam reapers remove unwanted stitches. On a latter note, the fine tip of a seam reapers lets you pick out single threads. 
while the rounded tip allows you to remove stitches along whole seam without tearing the fabric. Sewing Scissors Sharp sewing shears help keep your cutting accurate while preventing hand fatigue. Generally, it's worth it to choose a highly quality pair of scissors and spend a little more money to start. Using fabric scissors on anything other than fabric with all them. Causing uneven cutting, shredded fabric, and hand fatigue. It's a good idea to keep them tucked away with sewing tools and teach family members never to use your good scissors. To end this, keep your scissors in good condition, clean the blades regularly, and oil them occasionally. Avoid overextending the blades by trying to cut through too many layers at a time. Pinking shears. So what is a pinking shears? It have a jug blades that fit together to cut a soft -out edge on your fabric. For many tightly woven or non-fraying fabrics, a pink edge is sufficient as a seam finished. This is especially handy when working with lightweight fabrics that a soon seam finish will add too much thread or weight to the seam. Using pinking shears or non-fraying fabrics such as fleece, Helps reduce the blonde edge from showing through. When pressing a seam, it adds a finished look to the fabric. As with other sewing scissors, use pinking shears only for fabric and keep them clean and oiled. Pressing tools. So what is a pressing tool? As you saw, it's important to press your work with essential pressing tools. At the very least, you should have an iron and ironing board, of course. A press cloth prevents your fabric from scorching when applying more heat than you would if you were just ironing out wrinkles. They are available in different weights, including see-through press cloths. If you don't have one, a piece of muslin will do, but it's worth adding to your sewing tools. Hams and sleeve rolls are wonderful for pressing curves and seams that are in a tube area without pressing another area of the garment. Bodkin. So what is a bodkin? It is a handy tool to have but not a must-have item. Use this tool to thread or replace trust rings, elastic, and other items enclosed in a casing. Bodkins come in different style and textures to make the process easier. The simplest form looks like an oversized needle. With this type, the item you're pulling through a casing gets threaded and doubled over like with a needle. A tweezer-style bodkin grips the item and doesn't need to be doubled, which is useful in tight casings. Sewing Machine Manual So what is a sewing machine manual? It is the most important accessory you can have for your sewing machine. It is an essential tool for getting the most out of your machine. Always remember, the manual for your sewing machine guides you through every step of operating your model, it provides details for built-in stitches and features, and it helps when the machine malfunctions by offering troubleshooting details. All sewing machines may be similar, but to understand what your sewing machine is capable of doing, you will need a manual for your sewing machine make and model. If you no longer have the manual for your machine, you can contact the company that manufactured your machine and many are available online for free. Sewing Machine Shame Guide Sewing Machine Shame Guides help you sew consistent, accurate machines. The most commonly used shame guide is on the fruit plate of the sewing machine. Sewing machine feeds are also commonly used for narrow shame allowance guides. Attachable, adjustable guides offers a raised surface to prevent straying beyond the guide. This type of guide is the best for long straight shames. They do not work well with curved shames. Fabric Rotary Cutter It is quickly and accurately cut fabric with straight lines. You should always use a rotary cutter with a cutting mat and ruler. Because this tool is very sharp, it is important to learn how to safely use a rotary cutter. Rotary cutting mat. These mat or cutting pads are available in a variety of sizes, including folding mats. The mats are self-healing so rotary cutter don't cause damage to the mat 
and the mat doesn't damage to the rotary cutter. Rotary rulers. A rotary ruler are a great tool to assure that you are getting squares and angles that are perfect. Most cutting rulers feature 1 through 1 8 inches marking as well as 30, 45, and 60 degrees angle markers, but some includes even more markers. A 6 by 24 inches ruler is a good all-purpose size, but depending on the type of sewing you want to do. Purchasing additional rulers can make the job easier. We are done with the sewing equipment, so now let us proceed with the parts of the sewing machine. But before that, what is sewing machine? A sewing machine is a mechanically driven needle used to stitch materials together with a thread. It is designed to join pieces of fabric or leather by means of either a lock stitch or a chain stitch. So first is the spool pin. It holds the spool of thread in the correct position for the thread feeding mechanism to work properly. It allows the spool to turn as needed to unreel the thread but must keep the spool from being yanked off the machine by the force of the tension mechanisms. Next is the bobbin binder spindle. A bobbin is a little cylinder that may come with or without flanges. It holds the thread that is wound around it and the spindle is where the bobbin is placed during winding. Bobbin Winder Stopper The bobbin stopper works by stopping the bobbin once it is full. It is responsible for preventing the bobbin from spinning and loading more thread. Stitch with Dial The purpose of this part is to control the zigzag stitch option while you are busy concentrating on your sewing. Pattern selector dial is used to make different stitching patterns. Turn the pattern selector dial to set the symbol of the desired stitch pattern. Some machines have a very basic knob that turns to select the stitch, while others have multiple buttons or are completely computerized on a touch screen. The stitches are numbered on your machine, but in most manuals, it has both the stitch number and the name of the stitch, such as satin, stretch, and zigzag, as well as the tension, length, and width setting. Let's move on to hand wheel. Hand wheel is utilized to raise and lower the needle and it typically on the right side of the machine. Both manual and electric sewing machines feature the hand wheel. The first functional sewing machines used a hand crank to stitch the seams. This hand wheel is mostly used to bring the bobbin thread up through the needle plate and to raise or lower the needle for position changes or pivoting corners. When turning the hand wheel, make sure, make sure to turn it towards your body. Stitch length dial. Stitch length dial is utilized to control the length of the stitch. The dial with the illustration that looks like a dashed line. It starts off with a small dash and then the dashes gradually get bigger. Increasing makes the stitch longer which is great for busting stitches or when sewing very heavy fabric. The longer your stitch length, the more you will need to lower the tension. The opposite goes when reducing the stitch length, like when creating a satin stitch. The shorter your stitch length, the more you need to increase the tension. Reverse Stitch Lever The machine will sew in the reverse while the lever is pushed. As a connection, the reverse stitch lever is a part of sewing machine by which the foremost function of it is to create stitches in a backward movement. Hence, it is very essential owing to the fact that it builds a strong stitches and firm seams. Power switch. It is a substantial part of sewing machine that's usually located at the right side of sewing machine. On the other types of sewing machine, this switch is found near the power cord and is probably attached to the pedal. Hence, the foremost function of it is to turn off and on the machine. Bubin Winder Treat Guide 
These types of treat guides are used during bobbin winding. In this connection, bobbin winder is a part of sewing machine in which the foremost function of it is to ensure the correct direction and position of treats from spool to the bobbin. Thread tension dial. A thread tension dial is used to control the tension in the top thread. As with the tension dials, the amount of pressure will be increased when thicker threads are run under the bobbin spring. When you are adjusting the upper thread tension on your machine, remember that higher numbers in the dial indicate higher or tightened tension, and lower numbers indicate lower or looser tension. Thread Take-Up Lever During sewing, the top thread passes through the thread take-up lever. This lever, which is fitted to the body of the arms, moves your thread up and down as you sew. It feeds the thread goes through this lever when you thread your sewing machine. This lever is always at the top when you start sewing and ending the sewing. Needle Clamp and Screw The needle clamp and screw holds the needle in its actual place. This is the portion of the sewing machine which connects the needle bar and needle. This is attached with the help of a screw. The upright bar at the lower end of which the needle is attached, a needle clamp screw on this bar holds the needle in place. Presser foot. A presser foot is an attachment used with sewing machines to hold the fabric down under the needle as it is sewn. Besides the basic presser foot for sewing straight stitching lines, you can fit most of the sewing machines with a number of different press presser feet that do a lot of other functions. Presser feet add Add different functionalities to your sewing machine so that it can accomplish much more than mere straight stitching. These are the list of different presser feet. Straight stitch presser foot, zigzag presser foot, zipper foot, or peeping foot, invisible zipper foot, hammer foot. Button hole foot, button sewing foot, darning foot, satin stitch, stitch guide feet, overcast stitch foot, edge joining foot, blind stitch foot, walking foot, braiding foot, and many more. Bobbin cover A bobbin cover plate is a clear Plastic cover may be metal on some machines that slides out or is removed to access the bobbin case to place or remove the bobbin. There are two types of bobbin co cover, the front loading bobbin cover and the top loading bobbin cover. Top loading bobbin cover are most popular because it is much easier to access and threading the bobbin thread is easier as well. Bobbin cover release button is a button used to release the cover plate for entrance to the bobbin. This button is located on the right side of the cover plate. Sewing machine feed dogs are metal teeth like ridges that emerge from a hole in the through plate of a sewing machine. Feed dogs move as you sew, gently gripping the bottom fabric to help it pass through the sewing machine and produce a high quality stitch. A set of feed dogs typically resembles two or three short, thin metal bars, cross cut with diagonal teeth, which move back and forth in slots in a sewing machine's needle plate. Their purpose is to pull or feed the fabric through the machine in discrete steps in between stitches. A sewing needle or needle that is used for hand sewing 
that is a long slender tool with a pointed tip at one end and a hole at the other. A needle is a small, very thin piece of polished metal which is used for sewing. The basic functions of a needle is to make a hole in the fabric or material, to carry the needle thread through the material or fabric, to help form a needle thread loop which can be picked up by the hook or looper. Needle Plate All sewing machines have a needle stitch plate that is set over the main workspace where the presser foot and needle are located. One purpose of these plates is to cover the bottom area of the machine. However, they also serve other helpful purposes. The needle plate found on all sewing machines is the removable metal shield inset into the work surface of your sewing machine covering the bottom area. They are held in place by a few screws and usually include a smaller set-in plate that can be removed to access the bottom area to replace the thread or clean the machine. The needle plate has a smooth surface for fabric to slide across easily and serves as a guide to help us sew. These plates may not be instrumental to the actual function of the machine. However, there are convenient accessories that are included on most sewing machines and can help you create great projects.